This video is sponsored by Brilliant. OK, as we all know, when we have square root of 0, the answer is just equal to 0, because 0 squared will give us 0. But now, how we have thought about, what if we have square root of a 0 matrix? Is the answer just equal to the 0 matrix? Well, I will tell you that the answer for this right here is 2, negative 1, 4, and negative 2. It works. In fact, this is just an answer, but before we talk about anything else, let me just verify that this right here really works. So, when we take the square root of something equals the result, we will just have to square the result and see if we can get the inside. Right here, let's go ahead and check if we square this matrix, do we end up with the zeros matrix? Okay, this means we have to do 2, negative 1, 4, negative 2 times 2, negative 1, 4, negative 2. And this is how we multiply matrix. We do the dot product of the row and then the column here. So we do 2 times 2. And then we add negative 1 times 4. And you can see this is promising because this is equal to 0. And we continue. Let's do this dot that. So 2 times negative 1 plus negative 1 times this negative 2. So far so good, right? Because this is negative 2 and this is positive 2. And then continue. We do this, dot, dot. So 4 times 2 plus negative 2 times 4. And then lastly, this times that. And then plus negative 2 times negative 2. All right, ladies and gentlemen. This right here is equal to 0. This right here is equal to 0. This right here is 8, minus 8 is equal to 0. And lastly, this right here is negative 4, plus 4 is equal to 0. So as I told you, this right here is the answer for that. Well, I shouldn't use the word the. I should use the word n. Because in fact, we have infinitely many solutions for the square root of the zeros matrix. Hmm, how can we come with all the solutions though? Well, that's what we're going to find out right now. Before we get into today's video, I would just like to tell you guys about our sponsor today, Boolean.Work. Boolean is an online learning platform that helps you to get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, and more. What I love most is how it forces you to think. You are not just passive reading or watching. You are solving real problems step by step, and that's how real learning should be. Personally, I like Boolean because it reminds me how I learned math growing up by playing around with ideas and struggling a little until I really got it. It's that kind of hands-on thinking that helped me become a better problem solver and I see the same effect when I recommend it to my students. And if you're working on algebra or calculus, their courses are especially strong. Everything is built up to help you really understand. Go ahead and visit the link brain.work slash blackpenrepen or scan the QR code on screen or you can also click on the link in the description when you do that, you will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So go ahead and check them out. Okay, here we go. We want the square root of the 2 by 2 zeros matrix. And let's say the result is just A, B, C, D. So this means if we square this, A, B, C, D, we need to end up with 0, 0, 0, 0. So now let's just go ahead and expand this. That is A, B, C, D times A, B, C, D. And just do what we did earlier. We will have to do the dot product of this and that. So A times A, which is A squared, plus B times C. This is the first entry, and we will have to make it equal to that. And then we do the same thing. So we have A, B, plus this times that, so B, D. Continue AC plus this times that, so CD. And lastly, CB, well, actually BC, alphabetical order, and then D times D, which is D squared. Okay, so we want to make this 0, 0, 0, 0. And here we just have to make all the entries equal to 0. So we have conditions. The first one is A squared plus bc has to be 0, and then the next one is this equal to 0, so ab 
plus BD is equal to zero. And then continue this right here. AC plus CD make it equal zero. And then lastly, BC plus D squared is equal to zero. Now, we are just going to kind of make some observations along the way. And let's have a look. Right here, in fact, you will just kind of have to trial and error a little bit. It took me a while to come up with the shortest way to end up with the conclusion, which is the following, okay? Because maybe you wouldn't know like which variable to solve first. This is how I did it. I'm going to solve for a from this. So I will move this to the other side. So we get a squared is equal to negative bc. And of course, just take the square roots to both sides, cancel, we have the plus or minus. So a has to be plus or minus square root of negative bc. And right here, you might be worried about, are we going to end up with complex numbers? Well, we could if you would like to have a matrix with complex entries, that's totally fine. But if you don't want to, then just make sure that you pick b and c so that the result is real. Alright, so notice that A is depending on B and C. Keep that in mind. Right here, let's just do a natural thing because we see the B and B right here. So we can factor that out. And we get A plus D and that's equal to zero. So this tells us that either B is equal to zero or A plus D is equal to zero. In another word, we can say A is equal to negative D. Now for number well, this is like in the third equation. We are going to factor out C, and we can see a similar situation. We get C is equal to zero, or A is equal to negative D. And lastly, I think this is perhaps the hint, because we see the B and B, C and C in common. If you factor it out, and you see a connection of A is equal to negative D, which is quite nice. That's why maybe you want to solve for a from the first equation, and also we will be solving for d from the last equation. So for the last equation, I'm just going to have d squared is equal to negative bc, and do the same thing. And we see that d is equal to plus or minus square root of negative bc. Now we are going to put everything together. Notice that this and that, they look the same. That's a good thing, because that confirms with this connection. A is equal to negative D. And in fact, I will tell you, you don't have to worry about this and that, because I'm going to write down the most general form of the answer for that, right here for you guys. So if you want to get square root of 0, 0, 0, 0, we are going to end up with, first, let me just put a positive square root of negative BC for the A, and then B and C, you can pick anything that you want. So we call them three variables. So just put them down. Now, if this is A, then D has to be negative A. So we just have to have the negative square root of negative BC. Or we could have put negative square root for the A. So we can also have negative here, square root of negative BC. Again, B and C are free. And then in that case, D will just be the opposite of that, square root of negative BC, just like this. And if you want to see the answer that I got earlier, all we have to do is pick B to be negative 1, C to be positive 4, and then we will get negative 1 here and positive 4 here. That's negative 4, put it here, negative, negative 4 is 4, square root of 4, we get 2. And then we have negative 2 here. And that's the answer I used earlier. Feel free to create anything else that you want. By the way, if you put b is equal to 0, c is equal to 0, well, yeah, they are just right here. You make it equal to 0, so it's kind of up to you. If you would like, you can put 1 and 1. Then you can end up with i, square root of negative 1, right? And then negative i. Pretty cool stuff. All right, hopefully you guys all like this. That's it.